The American SR-71 was faster than a Soviet lie and just as black. Mach 3 crews, 30 kilometers up, dodging missiles like they were potholes. And then, the Pentagon retired it in the 90s. Not because it failed, but because it outran the paperwork classic. But the world got loud again, as Lockheed's Skunk Works made the most secret project they ever did, the SR-72. The SR-72, officially, it doesn't exist. Unofficially, it's burning a hole through the Pentagon's black budget and outrunning satellites. Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works has quietly overspent by $335 million since 2022. Suddenly, they needed dozens of new engineers fluent in combined cycle propulsion, a language only spoken in classified basements and sci-fi novels. Meanwhile, DARPA got suspiciously generous with grants for something called AFRA. Translation, America's building a rocket plane, and it's not for air shows. And then there's Top Gun, Maverick, the Dark Star Jet. That wasn't just Tom Cruise's midlife crisis in a flight suit. That was Lockheed showing off. The model was built in Skunk Works. The Pentagon approved the shape, and China, no joke, moved real satellites to get a better look at it. If that's not a confession, what is? Here's what we do know. The SR-72 isn't subsonic, supersonic, or trying to break records at an air show. It's being engineered for Mach 6. That's 7,400 kilometers per hour. Or in fun terms, Beijing to DC before your coffee gets cold. It runs on a turbine-based combined cycle engine. A polite way of saying, turbojet at takeoff, scramjet for panic mode. No afterburners, no drama, just speed. At altitude, it'll fly so fast, radar systems don't track it. They grieve its presence retroactively. Its role, the same as its father's, ISR and precision strike in denied airspace. But this time, with hypersonic payloads, and it flies so fast, it's halfway home before anyone knows they've been hit. Whispers suggest a first flight as early as 2025, a classified test somewhere in the Western US, cloaked in redacted documents and weather balloons. But ask any analyst seriously watching US black budgets, and they'll tell you, this thing is real. It's just invisible by design, and it couldn't come at a better time. China's testing sixth generation fighters, Russia's pushing stealth bombers with Arctic range. Hypersonic missiles are on every general's PowerPoint, but while everyone else tries to catch up, the US disappears again. With SR-72, one that comes at Mach 6. Mach 6 isn't just fast. It's blink and you missed your continent fast. You don't chase something at that speed. You track the sonic boom and pray you're looking in the right direction. So how do you build a jet that laughs at the sound barrier? You start with the engine, not just one, two engines in one. The SR-72 uses what's called a turbine-based combined cycle TBCC propulsion system. Part jet engine, part scramjet, part you're kidding, right? On the runway or below Mach 3, it hums along like a regular jet so turbojet handles the lift, smooth and classic. But once it hits altitude and pass Mach 3, the turbojet politely steps aside, and the scramjet lights up like a dragon on rocket fuel. Scramjet means supersonic combustion ramjet. That means it uses the insane speed of the air itself to compress oxygen. No moving parts, just pure, unfiltered speed addiction. This isn't science fiction. Lockheed Martin and Aerojet Rocketdyne have been at it since the early 2000s, backed by DARPA's $145 million investment into the advanced full-range engine. The engineers figured it out. How to build an engine that transitions from taxiing on a runway to surfing the upper atmosphere at six times the speed of sound. Compare that to Russia's hypersonic scene which mostly involves Kinzhal missiles duct taped to aging MiG-31s, fired and forgotten. Effective? Sometimes. Reusable? Never. Pilot-friendly. 
only if you enjoy riding a flying fuel tank designed during the Brezhnev era. The SR-72 doesn't need to be fired from another plane. It is the platform. A fully independent, hypersonic strike aircraft with no detachable drama. And let's talk skin. This beast is wrapped in classified composite materials that laugh in the face of heat. We're talking surface temps of over 1,000 degrees Celsius, enough to roast a turkey, the pilot, and the payload in one go. Every bolt, panel, and coating is tailored to handle thermal expansion, radar absorption, and aerodynamic punishment at speeds that would rip lesser aircraft apart. And at those speeds, altitude becomes armor. The SR-72 cruises at 30 kilometers up. That's higher than any operational Russian jet, missile system, or weather balloon pretending to collect data. Even if an S-400 radar spots it, and that's a big if, by the time they press a button, it's already halfway to the Pacific with expected combat range from 4,800 to 5,400 kilometers without refueling. With tanker support, well, pick a hemisphere. So do you still want to track it? Good luck. You're not even looking in the right part of the sky. But speed alone isn't the headline. It's what you do with it that changes history. If the SR-72 had a catchphrase, it'd be simple. Oops, too late. This aircraft isn't built for dogfights. It doesn't care about who's the best pilot. It's built to enter contested airspace, destroy command nodes, and vanish. All before anyone even calls for backup. Officially, it's for ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. But let's be honest, no one builds a Make-6 stealth jet just to take selfies over Beijing. This thing is a first strike ghost, designed to hit high value, heavily defended targets that other aircraft wouldn't even fly near. Imagine a Chinese A2-slash-AD bubble bristling with HQ-9s, S-400s, DF-21s, and angry press briefings. Now imagine a glint on a satellite photo that vanishes five minutes later, right before a missile factory mysteriously ceases to exist. Coincidence? Sure, let's go with that. The SR-72's job is to kick the door in before the rest of the Air Force gets dressed. We're talking hypersonic glide vehicles, modular stealth strike drones, autonomous decoys and swarms. A payload bay rumored to be built for DARPA's next-gen air-launched hypersonic missiles, including future air-launched variants of the AGM-183ARRW or DARPA's HAWC program. Think warheads that travel at Mach 5 to 8, with ranges up to 1,000 kilometers, launched from a platform already going Mach 6. Math it out, and you get something truly beautiful. That's Mach 12 in total. And don't forget the stealth. This jet is, find me, after the funeral, invisible. With sharp-angled geometry, infrared suppression, and radar-absorbing skin, it's optimized to be a bad dream on every frequency band. Meanwhile, what's Russia flying again? A 295 from the 1950s that sounds like a dishwasher full of gravel? China. The J-20 is slick, sure, until it tries to chase a ghost doing twice the speed and flying twice as high. So next time a satellite picks up a blurry triangle moving over the Pacific at Mach 5.8, don't ask what is it. Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works is where stealth is born, budgets go missing, and bureaucrats sign checks they pretend not to understand. This is the birthplace of the U-2, the SR-71, the F-117, the F-22, the F-35, and now the SR-72. Officially, the SR-72 is just a concept study, but unofficially, it's been eating Pentagon money like popcorn at a Senate hearing. Since 2022, Lockheed's filings show $335 million in unaccounted costs, the kind of overrun that doesn't happen unless you're either launching something or hiding it. And here's where it gets fun, patents. Because you can't keep everything classified. Over the last decade, Lockheed and Aerojet Rocketdyne 
have quietly filed designs for turbine-based combined cycle engines, scramjet cooling systems, composite materials for skin temperatures beyond 1,000 degrees Celsius, and something called a hypersonic inlet geometry stabilization system. Then there's the hiring spree, aerospace engineers, thermal dynamics specialists, stealth composite welders. You don't beef up your team like that for PowerPoint slides. And while they won't say it out loud, DARPA has been handing out contracts like it's Black Friday for classified programs. The Advanced Full Range Engine Project. That's a scramjet training camp. The mysterious HTV-3X. Probably its rebellious older cousin. Meanwhile, the budget committees keep nodding because no one wants to be the guy who underfunded the plane that could outrun Beijing. Let's be honest, defense systems weren't built for this. Most radar networks are designed to track commercial jets, slow bombers, maybe even cruise missiles if they're lucky. But a Mach 6 stealth aircraft flying at the edge of the stratosphere? That's like trying to catch lightning with a butterfly net. First, there's the speed wall. At that pace, the SR-72 can cross the entire South China Sea in under nine minutes. By the time an early warning system says incoming, the strike's already over, the aircraft is hundreds of kilometers away, and the only thing left is a hole in the ground. And a mystery. Then there's stealth geometry and skin. The SR-72 moves quiet. Its radar cross-section is likely lower than a steel baseball. With heat-dispersing skin, angled edges, and possibly plasma stealth tech in development, even infrared sensors have a hard time catching a signature. Now picture this. You're an enemy air defense operator. You get a warning ping, maybe. You scramble your S-400 or HQ-9 system. You launch a missile that climbs to altitude. And then what? The SR-72 is long gone. You're left holding a $1 million smoke trail. As for airborne interceptors, good luck. The fastest operational fighter in the world, the MiG-31, taps out around Mach 2.8, and that's in a straight line, with no maneuvering, before the engines melt. The SR-72 does Mach 6 on purpose. A first strike, high altitude, ultra-fast ghost platform that combines reconnaissance, strike, and deterrence in one package. And no nation, not China, not Russia, not Iran, has anything in the sky or on the ground that can match it. In fact, not a single hypersonic aircraft has ever been intercepted in modern combat. And the SR-72 is built for this exact reality, to operate outside the speed curve of all known air defenses. So yes, other countries can keep drawing triangles. They can build new radars, deploy more interceptors, and claim we're catching up. But by the time they see the SR-72, it'll be yesterday's problem. For decades, air power meant carrier strike groups, slow-moving bombers, fighters circling for hours, waiting for orders. That's done now. Governments are nervous because speed kills decisions. There's no time to negotiate when the strike already happened. No time to blame, spin, or retaliate cleanly. It's military disruption at Mach 6. But here's the twist. This jet also prevents war. Why? Because everyone knows it exists, and no one can touch it. It's the ultimate don't even try it platform. A moving red line that tells the world, if you start something, we finish it in under 10 minutes from the edge of space without being seen. And that's strangely comforting in a world full of uncertainty and fake hypersonic PR stunts. The SR-72 is real, functional, and soon, operational. If this jet's faster than a missile, your finger can be faster than a click. Smash that subscribe button before China tries to reverse engineer this video too. Thanks for watching and see you in our next videos.